Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright at here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a very interesting case of a patient who attended reporting a blocked left ear. And I'll just give you some background on this particular patient. They've had multiple ear surgeries in both ears, um, including the removal of a cholesteatoma in the right ear previously. And if you watch till the end of the video, you can see um, what their operated ear looks like. Uh, this patient's got a cartilage graft at the roof of her eardrum where a cholesterol normally forms. So what I'm removing here isn't earwax, it's dead skin, and it's really dry, dead skin. It's crystallised, and I'm just using micro there. However, I think I'm going to move on to an ear hook. Uh, when you've got dead skin really dry like this and crystallised, it's difficult to get a suction grip because the surface is so rough. So I'm just using a hook and what I'm trying to do is just get in underneath it and slowly extract and you'll see it's going to come away in a large singular piece. So I'm just loosening it around the edge. We could have also used the forceps for this. With the ear hook, um, I had a bit more maneuverability, as you can see here. Um, with the forceps, you're just going to grab it, but with the ear hook, you can manipulate the plug of dead skin as well so I was able to push it down from the roof loosen it and then bring it forwards so that's the patient's eardrum already there's alarm bells ringing there because you've got this dead skin um, located in the posterior superior quadrant which in the case of the left ear means the northeast region and that part of the eardrum is very susceptible to becoming retracted, as is the attic, the, the top, right, around 12 o'clock. Um, when we say retracted, we mean the eardrum can be sucked, buckled inwards due to negative middle ear pressure. And when the eardrum is sucked in, it creates a pocket for dead skin to collect and uh, accumulate. And that dead skin, if unremoved, can then form into a cholesteatoma, which is a, a, a plug, a cyst of dead skin that's self-growing, um, um, and it can be quite destructive. It can grow into the middle ear, um, towards the brain upwards. Um, it can grow posteriorly to where the mastoid bone is. It can lead to mastoiditis. It, untreated, a cholesteatoma can potentially be life-threatening. Now, this patient's already mentioned to me that they've had previous... Uh, surgery in their right ear. So I'm just delicately peeling away the skin and we're going to find a really large uh, retraction pocket here. So fortunately this is not yet, I don't think, developed into a cholesterotoma. Uh, and although it's growing inwards and it's stuck into the pocket, and you can probably see that retraction there. You can see the bony ridge around 12 o'clock and this is where the skin is ingressed inwards into the retraction pocket but the eardrum's still intact uh, and when I when you first remove it you, you you would be you would believe that the eardrum is perforated but it hasn't so this hasn't breached the epidermis layer of the eardrum the eardrum's still intact but it's just extremely retracted and you can actually see the eardrum there um, you can see the blood capillaries in that little hole so we're looking at 12 o'clock it looks like, but you can see the annulus as well, which is the annulus is a fibrocartilage that surrounds the eardrum. And if you look very closely in there, you can see the epidermis layer of the, the, the eardrum, which is the outermost layer. So the eardrum is made up of three, three layers. The epidermis layer, which is the same skin that lines the, the ear canal itself. The innermost lateral layer is uh, the mucosa layer, uh, membrane. And you can think about that similarly to the skin that lines inside of our nose and mouth. And then the middle layer is a layer of fibrous tissue. So this eardrum is still intact. And this patient's also got a retraction here. And it, it must be a hallucination, um, but it's almost like the long process of the incus is visible here uh, and protruding outwards more than the hammer bone, the, the malleus. So we've got three bones in the middle ear. You've got the hammer bone, which is the bone that's attached to the eardrum. You then got the, the stapes bone, also known as the stirrup, and that's attached to the organ of hearing, the cochlea. And linking the two of those bones, you've got the anvil, also known as the incus. So the incus is the middle bone. But here it's almost, 
it, again, it's probably just a bit of a, an illusion created, but it's almost like the incus is more visible uh, and more protruding laterally towards the entrance of the ear than the hammer bone. So just some dead skin here. Now, I just want to remove as much dead skin as possible. There is a, a secondary uh, retraction just here where there is some still skin there. Uh, and I tried my best to remove, just slowly peeling it away. Um, now, we don't know if this region's perforated, so I don't want to use any drops here just to loosen it because we just don't know what's behind it. I don't want any drops to get into the middle ear because that can also lead to uh, a middle ear infection. And the patient could hear so much better after removing this, and, 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 no, and, and to no surprise because you had this crusted dead skin. Uh, was that a cholesteatoma? I'd probably say no because it's not infected. Uh, but I would say that was on the verge of developing into a cholesterol At this stage, I would just say it's dry keratin that had got trapped in the retraction. So why do we get a retraction there? Behind the eardrums, so behind the structure here, we have the middle ear. And the middle ear, the air pressure in the middle ear should be equal to the air pressure in the environment. So when the air pressure is equal either side of the eardrum, you can see I'm trying to pull away a bit of skin there. And I just don't know whether there's a perforation here. So when the air pressure is equal either side of the eardrum, that's when the eardrum is at its most compliant, most mobile, that's when we hear the best. So there's a tube, the eustachian tube, that connects the middle ear to the back of the nose, with the, uh, the location of the nasopharynx. And the eustachian tube essentially is the pressure equalising tube. It opens during the course of the day involuntarily when we you swallow, yawn or chew and it allows the air pressure to equalise. And it can also act like a drain pipe, so any fluid that may accumulate in the middle ear it can drain away. So probably not going to get any more skin out there. Um, so it's just a bit of skin at the roof of the ear. I'm just going to peel that away. Um, so if that eustachian tube gets blocked for whatever reason at the back of the nose, uh, congestion, or uh, uh, a physical obstruction, or the muscles are weakened, they don't contract and open to allow air to equalise and enter and or exit, depending upon um, what the ear needs to do to enable to equalise the air pressure. The eardrum can get sucked inwards because all the remaining air in the middle ear gets absorbed by the cells of the mucosa, which causes a vacuum, a cupping effect, and the eardrum gets sucked in. And it's the attic region, the top part of the eardrum, and the posterior superior quadrant, to the, in this case, uh, about one o'clock. They're, they're the most susceptible of part of the eardrum to get sucked in because they're the, the thinnest, um, um, most flaccid part. And that region is actually called the pars lucida for that reason. When that eardrum gets pulled inwards it creates a pocket uh, and dead skin can get trapped so the eardrum as I said the outer layer the epidermis that's made up of layer of skin and as that skin dies and shows it should move slowly off the eardrum off the ear canal uh, and out of the ear but if you've got a pocket there the skin as it's migrating it falls into the pocket then it can form into a plug of dead skin and that skin can then form into a cyst uh, and can get infected and it can cause a whole host of problems. So given this patient's history, I've written to the patient's GP, uh, although I'm really happy with what we've done, we just, I just want to be safe and sorry because this patient has previous cholesterol surgery. I think they just need to see ENT again. So we've made that referral. Um, and it's just a bit of residual dead skin here that I'm peeling away as much as I can. I'm not overly concerned. It's more, I'm more concerned about the skin near the eardrum. That, that's the area of concern. So this patient's ear is generally quite dry, uh, it's causing the skin to become quite dry. And when you've got dry skin like this, it, sometimes patients can find it very itchy and irritable because it's it's crusted with like shards of glass. So when you move your jaw, for example, you can feel that skin, it's so tight and constricted. It can rub and abrase the canal wall. So it can be uncomfortable for the patient so again, I'm just trying to peel away some of this front section. So this patient's um, been advised to avoid water in the ear just in case there's a perforation centrally where that dead skin was. And um, this is their right ear. And you can see at the top, so 11 o'clock, that's the cartilage graft. Um, the attic region's been drilled away. That's where the cholesterol can be formed. There's some tympanous sclerosis, a scar tissue anteriorly at three o'clock. That's the white patches there. But this is disease free, so that's, it's um, great news for the patient. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.